Amen. 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 We're glad you just joined us here on Christian Life Assembly, and I'm Brother Nathan. We're glad to be with you today, and uh, this is our address. If you want to write us or send us anything, please feel free to do so and to share with us. And we're glad you're joining us today, and we have some different things coming up for us. Sister Linda Bowers is going to be sharing tonight. We're excited about that. She has a testimony uh, of how God has brought her through the COVID virus, and she has scriptures and songs to go with that. So we invite those tonight and partake of we'll be here and look forward to what God will do through the sharing, Sister Linda sharing. We also look forward to Brother Gary. We're looking forward to him. He'll be sharing next Sunday morning. And Sister Olana is set to share next Sunday night. So we have three different speakers coming up after this on the Sunday. So we look forward to all of them and look forward to some others coming up real soon here to share. And so we're going to get into his word today. And uh, if you want to turn, the first place we'll actually be looking is in Psalm of Solomon 2.15. Psalm of Solomon. Oh, yeah, we'll start there. We'll start with Psalm of Solomon 2.15. And uh, God bless the kids. God bless you. You guys, thank you so much. Isn't it good to should be able to talk about his word today? Amen. Isn't yes. it good? It's good to know his presence has been strong with us today. And we do want to give him the honor for that. But we want to talk about something the Lord laid on my heart. Sometime back, I believe this is the time for us to present that to us today. Psalm of Solomon 2.15. I call this today doing small things well. Doing small things well. All right. This verse says this. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. All right. Let's stop there. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you, dear God, for the, the, the power that you give us, dear God, for the things that seem big and the things that seem small, dear God. Lord, you have good things in store for all of those for us. And we just pray your blessings and your peace be in us as we share this today. And we love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of times we need God to do something big for us. Amen. We need a big touch from the Lord. In these days that we're living in, we realize that more and more we need a big touch on our health, a big touch on our souls. But so oftentimes those big touches come from the small, the things that seem small to us. And so we talk about that because we have to watch those small things. When I was little, our first real pet that we could call our pet in our family was a little Siamese tabby cat. He was a little, little kitty cat. And so our sister got him from West Kentucky and brought him in. It was almost exactly 25 years ago. That was our first little pet. And so here comes this little kitty. And so, you know, you're just excited. Yay, it's time to get a little pet. You know, we had some other pets, but they weren't really like our pet, if you know what I'm saying, because they, they had been there before we could remember. But this little kitty was ours. And so here comes this little kitty. And so you're just like, oh, you're so excited. And then what's the first thing as a kid you want to do? You want to hold your new pet, right? Yeah. And so guess what little kitties have? Claws. claws. Little claws that aren't so really little when they, you feel them in your... Because guess what I did? I pick a cat up. Guess what they do? Woo! I feel this little kitty today. He was scared. He was really scared and getting used. And so when he was doing that, he clawed right into me. It taught me a little bit of a lesson, didn't it, Aaron? It taught, me, it taught us, or me anyway, a uh, little lesson. you got to watch the small things sometimes. you got to look at those small things that otherwise you wouldn't look at. And I'm going to come back to this verse in a minute because we're going to drive our car somewhere and kind of build up to this. Pastor Gary will share John chapter 15 and verse 16. John chapter 15 and verse 16. The Bible says this, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Amen? Your fruit should remain. So, see, he is calling us today, amen? He reaches out and he calls us. So we better, we better answer because he's calling us to bear fruit, amen? That's the call today. He wants us to bear some good fruit. That encourages me. I believe that Jesus doesn't want us just to bear fruit in the good times. He wants us to bear fruit all the time. Amen. All the time he has called us amen. to good that we can do. We can do it through him. It encourages us. In the harder times, he's called us to bear fruit. 
Well, what fruit are we supposed to bear? Well, let's look at, at some fruit in Matthew chapter 22 and verses 37 through 39. Again, kind of looking at the big thing, kind of a big picture to look at here. Because uh, as Pastor Gary was sharing, the law was 613 different commandments. What is the law kind of boiled down? The big idea. Jesus says it to us. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. I actually had that one in there from another passage. So forgive me. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. These are big things. Love the Lord with everything and love your neighbors. That's really what it all boils down to, right? But it doesn't. And I think if we took a poll of everybody in here, we'd all say, that's what we need to do, right? We need to love God and love our neighbors. But how many of us know it's not just the big idea, right? It's the little thing that a lot of times can break yes, that down yes. where that doesn't end up happening or where it gloriously does happen. It's the little things. And so these are big and great commandments. But if we go back to Psalm of Solomon 2 and verse 15, Psalm of Solomon 2 and verse 15 that we started with, uh, Solomon and, and his bride, the, the poetry we have here, she was speaking in this part, Solomon's bride, and says this, catch the little foxes that spoil the vines. It's the little ones that'll get to us. And so what she was saying in this passage is we love each other. Our love is a big, great thing. Amen? Okay. And but, but the little foxes represent those the little seeming problems that can really damage your relationship. And how many of us know we love Jesus? Amen? Even more than a man and a woman love each other, we love Jesus. Yes. And how many of us know those little things, the little foxes, the little troubles, can come in and, and take away the things that we would have for us. And so, in the same way that those little foxes represent little seeming problems, uh, we've got to look out for anything, anything that might cause our relationship with Jesus harm. Amen? And the or could do it good. Could do it good to build us up. So we want to talk about that. Let's look, up to, let's look at some little things. Let's look at some things that can add up to loving God and loving people. So, um, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Let's talk about loving God first. We've got two commandments, right? Love God and love people. So we got a commandment here. Hebrews 12 and verse 2. We look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. A little bit of a compact of the gospel right there for us. Look at the shame that he endured. Look at the big, giant work that Jesus did for us. Look at the glory that he brought down, even in the shame that he felt. The good that he despised the shame, it says, in fact. And he is gloriously honored today as King of kings and Lord of lords, bigger and higher than anything or anyone else. But we do want to say this. How can we fix our eyes on this Jesus? How? How, how? So let's look at it. We'll talk about a few things we can talk about all day about it really but we'll talk about a few things for us here we read at the beginning today first thessalonians 5 verse 17 first thessalonians 5 17 pray without ceasing very short verse there but a powerful verse a powerful verse a big big idea that we need we have a big need for our prayer time you know it's good to have that time that we set aside with god every day Amen? We set aside time with God. Amen. Sometimes if it's like, well, yeah, I know I need to pray, but we don't set aside that time, does it happen? A lot of times it might not. might not. We've got to set that aside. It may seem like a little thing to us, but we set aside that time to pray. And something else I really wanted to, to, to focus on here is that not only do we need, see, something you, you're taught, you need to pray, right? As a kid, you need to pray. You had that time, you say your prayers before bed, or you say your prayers during the day, whatever. But the beautiful thing about that verse is I don't have to stop being connected to God. Amen. I don't have to stop being connected to Jesus. It's those, if you want to call them that little prayers, all throughout the day, you know what I'm talking about, driving down the road, Amen. maybe coming down the road. Maybe you're, you're, you can't sleep at night. It's those little prayers. Lord, help me. This is on my mind. That's been the, what it has been for this week for me, those little prayers it's in, this, in the bedtime. Um, those little times... Uh, that they might seem little, but God does big things in those as we're just communing with our Lord and our Savior, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. The little seeming things. It adds up to a big, good thing, and that's connection with our God, connection with the only God. 
And so it's those times connecting with him in prayer uh, all the time. All the time we have the ability to do that. Amen? Even when you're not, you wouldn't think necessarily you could. You're doing your job. You're going about your business. He wants us to talk. He wants us to talk to him. Amen. Yes, Amen? Yes. yes. I believe that. Yes, I believe yes. he does. And, and, and what seems little ends up being really big. Let's talk about another one. Church attendance. Guess what? You're here. That's a good thing. We don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That's, that's his commandment. It's a big commandment. It's a good commandment. But here's something else that we have to look at because sometimes we, we say, well, I brought myself here and that's what I need to do. But guess what? I'll just speak for myself. Sometimes we can check out for lunch a little bit early. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? We're ready to go. We're ready to see what's out there. Now, now back at, you know, some of the restaurants now, it's, it's maybe not quite as much. But we check out. We're thinking about the good stuff, right, that we're going to get after we eat, uh, after our service here. And uh, let's not do that too so much because it's, it's easy on the computer. If you're watching this today online, it's easy sometimes to check out, you know. And we've had some online services lately, and I, I, you know, I, have to, I need to make sure I keep my focus because we say, yeah, I'm here. I'm doing what I need to do. But we have to always kind of work to make sure that focus is there. And keep, again, it goes back to that connection with God, but make sure we keep focus on the message that's being presented. Because sometimes the preacher may not make sense to us. Is that right? Preacher may not make sense. Uh, what he says, maybe, or she says, may seem the most boring thing. Oh, I don't have to hear that again. Oh, I don't want to do it. And then we're, we're checked out. We're gone. We're already gone to lunch. We're already gone home doing something else. And the reason that I say that is this, it's those little things. Yeah, you may have heard the message before, but it's those little things that can add up to big stuff that God is working in our minds and in our hearts. And we'll pay attention. The message may not be, the big message may not be for you that day, but guess what? The Spirit can still speak to you. He can say something to you from what the speaker is saying that, that really could change your life. But it's not going to if you're checked out, if you're gone. If you're already gone, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. See, he's still calling, right? He's still calling us, and he is still yes. looking out to speak to us today in the service. Yes. Amen. Yes. And uh, he's called us a lot today, so we're, we're glad. And, and I say that for this, that I, when I was little, you know, you think, you know, well, the kids don't really pay attention. You know what? It's amazing, the little things, oh, the little yes. things that, that you remember from pastors that were here at this church a long time ago. There was a pastor here at this church, and his name was Mitch Morgan. He was pastor here a couple of years, oh, many years ago. And he said, he was saying in the sermon one time, he was like, I was thinking, because I used to have a lot, a lot of sinus headaches. And he would say, well, something you could do. He was just preaching along. He wasn't, I don't remember the sermon. I, don't, I wouldn't, couldn't tell you if you put a gun to my head what the sermon was about. But I remember he said, yeah, you can pray to Jesus if you've got a headache. You can take, and then take your aspirin, then take the medicine, but pray to Jesus. It's life changing to think about that. Hey, I don't have to just take that first and just be dependent on that medicine. I can go to Jesus and come to him. And I say that for this. Those little things that we hear, oh, the connection to God that can be precious, that we can have if we'll only be willing to hang in there. Hang in there through what seems to be just uh, uh, the humdrum or the little things. God wants to speak to you and to me. Amen? Amen. He, wants to, he wants to be heard. In the little things, it might not seem so big to us. All right. Let me, let me do one more thing. Let me do one more thing. A couple a couple more for this. Um, giving. You know, we, maybe we bring our tithe or offering. But you know what God says in his word? He loves a cheerful giver. It might seem like a small thing. But oh, the blessings that can come when we're excited about the opportunity to give rather than just the duty. Amen. It's a, it may seem little. But little is much when God is in it, as they say. Also, let me, let me give you another one. So now we might not, you know, we talk about our mouths. That's another one because, you know, you don't take the name of your Lord God in vain. It's a Ten Commandment, right? But how many of us know we can do things with our mouths that might seem little that really end up being big trouble for us? We actually put down God with what we say yeah. in, the, in the little things as they seem to be. So I encourage us. God deserves it all. Amen. Amen. He deserves everything, even the little yes. things. Even the little things. Loving God. Second is loving others. We have here. Loving others. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 16. It's a good verse to think about. It's a big idea. 
But do not forget to do good and to share with such sacrifice as God is well pleased. Amen. God wants us to share. It's a, it's a big thing. It, 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 seems, it seems simple. It's a big idea, but we need to do it. Okay. Um, you know, we're supposed to give, right? We're supposed to give to the poor. That's what he said. We're supposed to take care of the poor. That's a big idea. Uh, but how many of us know we may not always have the big bucks? Amen. Yeah. We may not always have the big the, the things that seem like they're the biggest, right, to give away. But how many of that verse, uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 42, I want to share this with us to, to, and whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of the disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. <laughs> a cup of cold water. That cold water that you give, that, that thing that seems so small, what a big thing it could do for somebody. Amen? Amen? That's the thing. We may not have a million dollar check to write, but we can give something. God can call us to give something that we have to somebody else, and it can make a big, big difference. And I'll tell just a little story about that for us here. It, it's amazing how God works, amen? The things that seem small, the, the, the gift, the thing we need just at the right time. When I was a youth pastor, I wore out my sack. You have to have a, I, I, I felt like I needed a satchel to carry all my stuff around in. So I had a satchel, but it blew up, right? It wore out. And so I didn't have that satchel anymore. It's like, what am I going to do? You know, it, was a, it seemed like a small thing, but what am I going to do? But a lady in that church, a little, little lady in that church, she said to me, you know, I, my, I was going to give this, this little satchel uh, to my son, but he didn't need it. And so why don't you take it? It was a beautiful briefcase. Beautiful. If you could carry it over your shoulder, I could put all my stuff in, my laptop, and I could fit everything in. Wow. It might have seemed small, but the big, it was big to me that day when she Amen. gave it to me. The little things that you can give to somebody. Oh, let us be obedient to the Spirit that He gives those things that, yeah, it seems small, but it's big when He puts His, his work into it. I just encourage us in our giving, loving others. Serving others, Romans chapter 12 and verse 13. Romans chapter 12 and verse 13. Uh, we distribute to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. It's good to serve others. It's good to do that extra chore. Because, see, you see, sometimes the big things are what we think about, but it's sometimes those little chores, those little activities that may go unnoticed. God doesn't, doesn't forget them. And the thing is, we really need those. Say, man, how many know we need the things that seem small? A lot of times more than the things we think that seem that seem big. We need the the good. How many know a good attitude is precious while we serve? We got to serve. We, we, we need to serve. That's what it says. But how many of us know it's a good attitude really that can make all the difference? Oh, yes. We need that. Servanthood is, is the attitude that we have. And so um I, I, just a small story with that too. Um, as a pastor, sometimes I go to meetings, and you know, you, you go to meetings, and one of the meetings are what we call the section here of our church. It extends all the way over to Albany, Kentucky. And if you know where Albany, Kentucky is, that's over two hours from here. It's a little bit of a drive. And so I remember I had to go to this, or I, I was going to this meeting. I didn't have to go, but I went to this meeting over in Albany. It's like, why am I doing this? But you know, it's like, you know, well. But it's good to do and everything. But I was just blessed. The ladies of that church, the folks of that church, they served us a meal. And it, yeah, I wasn't what I, it wasn't filet mignon or something like that. But I could see those ladies in that church, the heart they had to serve. And, and it just touched me. It's like, yeah, that's why I came all this way. I saw God in action serving through those ladies, pouring the tea, doing all the things with a cheerful attitude and a good heart. That that it made a difference. It made an impact on me to say to see that. It all was that was. Seven, eight years ago. And I still remember how, how sweet those ladies were to me in serving that food. And I said that to say this, the little things that seem little. The little foxes can spoil it. But I tell you what, it's the little things that can build up to a witness. Because somebody that doesn't know Jesus maybe can react to all the, the, the serving that we can do. The little things that we can do. Somebody that does know Jesus is at a low point. Yeah, I don't remember all that was going through at that time. But... It encourages. It builds us up to say, hey, I'm not alone in this struggle. There are others that are shoulder to shoulder, as the yeah, scriptures yes. say, that are serving with me with Amen. a good attitude. It seems small, but it's big when God is working in it. Amen. Distribute to the saints good things. And one more I'll mention here. 
Words and speeches might be planned carefully. You know, you have the big sermons, right? You have your sermons, and, and, and sometimes as a pastor, we, we look to those. But it can also be the small words that change lives. And, and just kind of speaking as a preacher, you, you know, I, I've talked quite a bit. I've, I've stood up here in other places, and I've done a lot of these. But I, I do want to say this. Oftentimes, it's a one-on-one -on -one that really does even, right. even more. It's that speaking with somebody else. And so maybe we think about, well, the preacher, oh, it's, it's big. And we need the preacher. We need the preacher. We need the big. But you know what? That one-on-one -on -one time that you share with somebody, oh, that one life, who knows what that one life could do Amen. for Jesus? I, I, how many know the spiritual sons and daughters that could be raised up from that yes. one life that yes. we touch, speaking to them? It seems small. You think, well, it's not as good as so-and-so. But that one life, what kind of difference could they make? That's what right. kind of difference could God use through them? And uh, that one-on-one -on -one times I know I've had with, with youth and kids and adults, it makes the difference. It makes the difference. And it's the little things, the little things that we say and do. I, I like this little story. This is about a politician, uh, a little funny story, a politician many years ago from the state of Georgia. His name was Alexander Stevens. He was itty bitty 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 and uh, small, thin, frail, and there was a big other politician. He was in the Capitol, and uh, they were angry at each other. And the big one says, I have a mind, Alexander, to swallow you whole and alive. And, and the little guy, he, he's there and he stands, if you do, you'll have more brains in your belly than you ever did in your head. <laughs> Amen. So what I'm saying here is sometimes the little ones, they're the feisty ones, and they're the ones you got to watch out. Amen. The little things, and that's that's the point I'm having. we got to watch out for those little things that we say and we do. Uh, and, and I'm just kind of winding this down, bringing this down. Um, sometimes our words can be angry. You know, and one thing I, that really kind of made me focus on this, in this pandemic, we've had to have more drive-throughs, right? You go through the drive, or at least for me, I go through the drive through a lot more than I did before yeah. because you just have to. And in going through the drive through there's a lot of other people going through the drive through too. And I found out some of the drive throughs are set up, you know, they have the two, you can cut. You can actually cut somebody. You know, kind of know what I'm talking about? You can swing around and you, they just keep coming and they, they keep coming on around and they're not doing what they're supposed to. And there was one night I was, I was pulled into the drive through I got mad. These people are cutting me. You know, and I can feel the room. You can kind of feel it boiling up in me. It's the little foxes that spoil us sometimes. And I have to stop and think, no, this isn't what Jesus would do, is it? Jesus would do the big things good, but he also does the small things good. Because really, it is a small thing, right? If they get their, if they get their burger and fries a few moments before me, it's not going to kill me. not going not gonna, to not gonna impact it. I still may not like it, but it's not something that has to mess my whole day up. Amen? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? It's the little things. We get, we get angry. Uh, I, was, I was in Bowling Green. You know, I, I had to get COVID tested. You go to Bowling Green. You're driving. They, you, right before you get to Bowling Green right now, they've cinched in the lanes. I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Riders are coming in the city. I think probably anybody that's been there. And, you know, they're cinched in the lanes. And one guy, I was, I was coming back home, and I, I, I think there was just, it was about maybe like me to the camera almost here, that, that much room, and he pulled in between me before the lanes went from two to one. Does that ever make anybody mad? Yeah. And that was the yeah. same night with the drive through too. So, you know, you're getting yeah. you're feeling it. It's the little things. You have to give it over. Say, Lord, I give these little things to you. Yeah. Dealing with other people. Because other people, the little things, they add up sometimes to some big rage, some big sin. But God doesn't call us to that. He instead would have us to give, uh, give ourselves over to him and say, Lord, <laughs> you got the big things and you got the small things. Amen. And, and he's got these. These things that we're worried about. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The last verse I have. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing. Know that you are called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Amen. Instead of cursing, we bless. Yeah. Instead of getting enraged, we pray. It's the little things that make all the difference in, in, in what we do. What can I do? We do need to ask that in these times. As I was coming up through, you look for something big. I want a big ministry. 
I want a big job. You know, I've applied for other jobs. You want a real, you know, the, the, the things that maybe seem big in, in your head. You might not ever admit it, but sometimes you like that. And we think we need to do the big things. But I found for me, sometimes it's the, the things that seem small, they add up to something really good. And God, I know, has had to teach me that. And I believe he would encourage us for this church. I believe, you know, maybe the church seems small to us, but God does good things in the things that seem small. And then he makes them big. Amen. As we do what he's called us to do, as we step out in the plan he has for us, he'll give us more. It'll get bigger, but we got to start where he's put us. Amen. We start off with a small, we build up. It's the little things, the little things that make a big difference. Thoughts become actions, actions become habits, and habits become a life. Wasn't always the words of the minister was praying with me at the altar. I can remember, I can't remember a lot of sermons from my time in college and all that, but I remember they prayed for me at the altar. I may not remember all the big big lessons I had, but I remember them taking me in their car and driving me around and, and mentoring me, lifting me up. I remember those things. The big things. Yes, they're good, but it's the little things that really add up. Oh, yes. Can we get an amen to that? Amen. Amen. We're going to bow our heads to the Lord now. Father God, we thank you for, uh, for this today, dear God that we're here. It may seem like a little thing that we're here on a Sunday morning. But Lord, it's a big thing, dear God, that you want to do something in our lives today. It's a big thing. Lord, I just pray this, dear God, for anyone that's here or anybody that's watching, anybody that they really need to do a big thing in their lives, and that's turn it completely over to Jesus. Turn it completely over to Jesus. Because the small things really don't work unless we do that big thing. Turn our lives to Him. Turn everything, not just the parts that we think we want to, but everything. Acknowledge that we, we, we're a sinner, that everybody's a sinner. Yes. But we can turn our lives over to Him, a big God that's going to do big things and help us do the things that seem small to Him. And I just want to encourage anybody that's here, anybody that's watching that needs to turn their life to Jesus. Let's do that right now. Let's make it right. We don't, we're not guaranteed. In these times we're living in, we're not guaranteed another moment. Let's dedicate ourselves to Him. If there's anybody that's out there that you, maybe you, you accepted Jesus sometime, but you're just not sure. You're not sure you're on the right track. Today is a good day. Today is a very good day to make it right with Him. Thank you, Jesus. With heads bowed and eyes closed, is there anybody in our number in our midst that would say, I want to turn it all over to Jesus today? Anybody here in the, in the house that does? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. He sees the, the hands. He sees the hearts. If there's anybody that's watching today, too, you can pray this, too. You can pray this, too. I just would like that everybody would. We, we don't always do it this way, but I do want to do it this way today. Could I invite you to pray this and repeat this after me? And I'll pray this in phrases. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge without you, I'm a sinner. But today, I say, you are the forgiver. You are the forgiver. You are the Savior. You are the Savior. And I give my life to you. I give my life to you. I confess my sins. I confess my sins. And I confess you as Lord. I confess you as Lord. And Savior. And Savior. I bless you today. I bless you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe if you prayed that today and you meant it in your heart. God saved you. He took you into his kingdom. Yes. And I just encourage you, let us know, right? If you're out there and you're watching this, write us and let us know. We want to encourage you as well. If you're here in the house today and you pray that and it really is, is something you're doing for the first time or a needed time, we want to encourage you too. Make sure to talk to, to one of us and be encouraged. It's a big thing. But oh, what a good thing. Can we just praise his name for anybody that prays? Can we just praise his name today that he is our Savior? Oh, we praise you for any of them that prayed that prayer. Oh, we accept you as Savior. We give you glory today. You are the forgiver. You, dear God, are the Savior, Jesus. We serve you today. We serve you, Jesus. We thank you for that.